Hi everyone, I believe that you're doing uh, great and awesome today. It is nice to be here with you again and uh, to have an open live for everyone uh, one more time. So, today I'd like to bring in this insight on feeling. And actually I am prompted to make this live video, maybe compare about um, after I've realized with about two lessons I've had in this um, last week with two amazing students from certain questions that he asked, I realized this is maybe something really a lot of people should understand and get clearly in their um, mind when they want to use your, their imagination to you know create the results they want. So, given facts, well, we've discussed this time and again, and I know that by now you know it for, for a fact. Well, I could say proven facts, maybe whether for you or for um, people you know that you've read or heard our stories. And it's that imagination creates reality. Alright, another fact you probably have heard of is that this is done with the secret of feeling. That feeling is why it works. So what I want to share with you today is um, to understand the kind of feeling you're going for, all right? So I want you to consider this analogy. Now, I don't know what kind of uh, meal is your favorite meal, but I don't think it's earth warm, for example. <laughs> so I don't think you take worms. But look at this. You don't take worms, but fish, you know, in, in the sea, they eat worms. That's one of the things they like to eat. So let's say you want to fish. You can you want to go fishing. Now your favorite meal is probably some sandwich, burger, or maybe bread, maybe rice, okay, whatever. But it definitely isn't warm. But you know what you'd put on the um, hook? You don't put burger. You don't put bread. You put what? Warm. Because that's what could help you bring the fish out. That's the same as it goes literally in our consciousness. That analogy is actually it's a perfect allegory of what actually what really happens within us in our own consciousness. So let's look at what we do in consciousness. Your consciousness is the sea, alright, the depth that contains all sorts of ideas. And the ideas of consciousness or states of consciousness. They are simply the fish in the ocean or in the sea, all right? And when you create an effective scene of the wish fulfilled, that's when you place the bait, all right, on the hook. So you have to ensure that the kind of scene you're placing there is the kind of scene that would fetch the feeling of the wish fulfilled, which we've discussed this a number of times. I think my the video I did, um, the live video I had, two or maybe a couple of weeks ago anyway really covered this on how to use your imagination so you have to create an effective scene now where we're going to is this once you've created that scene and then you imagine that particular scene the feeling that would be yours if that scene is effective is not necessarily a feeling of excitement or um, a feeling of I don't know restlessness yeah, it's not that. The feeling, if you've done it appropriately, should be nearing on, tending towards relief. In fact, if you've done it exactly accurately and you've done it like you just eat the bullseye, all right, the feeling you'd be having from there would be relief. Relief. Okay? So, let's review. The reason why this is very important is because. I've realized um, recently that lots of times when we are doing the imaginal scene or when a person is doing the imaginal scene and they are not so much aware of the nature of the feeling that would be theirs when the wish is fulfilled, they wonder if they are doing the wrong thing just because what they are imagining doesn't bring them the kind of excitement they had when they read other people's success stories. 
Now, listen, and I want you to really listen attentively so you can understand what I'm saying now. When you read a success story, a case history, someone's amazing results, you would naturally be excited. That's the appropriate feeling of that moment. Because when you're reading that success story, you are seeing what they are sharing, but you're thinking of that state. So you'd be excited for that state. Especially if it is a state that you want for yourself. If it's not a state that you want for yourself, your excitement might only be on to the level of celebration or jubilation. But if it's a state that you wish for yourself, your excitement may even go into the level of anxiety or jealousy or envying or wishing it for yourself also. In other words, at that point where you're reading someone's success story, it's natural for you to have desire. And that is that shows itself in the feeling of excitement. What happens, however, is that when you get into imagining your own wish fulfilled, you wouldn't be having that same feeling of excitement or that feeling of, you know, rush on you expecting it, anticipating with rush. You will be having that feeling. Does that mean that what you're doing is wrong or does that mean that you're doubtful? No. It actually means you're doing it accurately. You're doing it appropriately. Do you understand? If you end up feeling that rush or if you're trying to get that feeling of excitement that you find yourself having when you were reading someone else's success story, you're still in the desire, in the wanting, and you're not in the having. So you are to go from that moment and I hope you really realize it now that the moment you're reading a success story of something especially something you wish for yourself you're actually in a state of desire you're wanting it so you're naturally excited you are having the rush you're like yeah everything happens the adrenaline shoots up or whatever but when you go to imagine your wish fulfilled with an appropriate scene that matches the wish fulfilled Okay, what would happen is a shift from that excitement and that all that rush to relief, accomplishment or jubilation. Alright, and I'm saying this because I actually, this is like, I have seen two questions or I have come across two questions around this particular thing within the week. Okay, so I'm sharing it so that you can really understand. The feeling when you're imagining is not the same as the feeling when you're reading someone else's success stories. When you're reading Neville's lectures and then you read Neville's lectures and it says your imagination is God. Or maybe you, you read um, my book or you, um, you attend my classes and then you hear that your imagination can do incredible things and this is how to do it and it's giving you all the chills and rush and excitement. Okay cool down because that is not the same as the feeling you'd be having when you actually do the work so what you have to do is to actually do the work all right which is that let's look at what the work is to do so you create a simple imaginal scene if you want something the imaginal scene must be an event that could only happen after that particular desire is fulfilled not an event that will happen to make that desire fulfilled. Not an event that will happen when that desire is about to be fulfilled. But an event that will happen only after that desire has been fulfilled. So you create such a thing. So let's take an example. You want, a, let's say you want a job. Alright. So you want a job, a desire, a scene that you would use wouldn't involve something like someone saying, Oh, have you done the interview? Yes, I've done the interview. Not, not that kind of a scene. It wouldn't include a scene where they're saying, Okay, we did the interview with you. And uh, maybe a feedback from the employers saying that, Yes, that interview with you was one of the greatest interviews we've had in our industry. Who does that help? No, that doesn't guarantee that you got the job. They could say, Well, it's the greatest interview we've had in our industry. But we couldn't afford you at the end of the day. So, does that help you? No. So, it's not that. It promises that you might get the job, but it doesn't mean that you have gotten the job. Alright? 
So it's going to give you the same kind of excitement that reading someone's success story is going to give you. All right? So it's going to give you the same kind of looking forward to. Do you see that? When you're reading someone else's success story on how they got a job using their inner conversation, you're looking forward to having the same kind of success story where you have a job using your inner conversation. Meaning that you're not using your inner conversation at that time. And at the same time, the feeling of excitement you're having based on that is not the same feeling that actually accomplishes your wish fulfilled. So in the imaginal scene, if you are looking forward to it happening, then you're not imagining the wish fulfilled. So you go back to change that scene to something more like this. Something more like, congratulations on the job. Which, if you do imagine it, you'd realize that you don't have that feeling of looking forward to it happening. You have that feeling of, wow, it's done. Oh, what a relief. Oh, finally, it's mine. You know, about last year, um, I think this was July last year. So I met this, this amazing lady um, back when I was back at the hotel. And she was working at the kitchen there. So one day I was at the lounge studying Neville. And then she came and she said, so teach me what you're doing exactly. I said, no worries, I'm going to teach you. So I told her and I broke it down for her. Then I asked her to imagine a scene that would imply a wish is fulfilled. So she told me she's thinking of this, thinking of that. She's thinking of being top of the competition. I said, no, no, no. See, what you want to do, your desire is to have a business that is global. All right? Your scene is not going to be that you and your competitors are competing. No. Your scene is going to be something that specifies your global. So she said, okay, so she, see, um, she then suggested, all right, there's a magazine that would definitely have a, a uh, photo on the cover and she could see a photo she could see a name and I said alright so imagine that just the magazine the cover it's your photo it's your name and it has a big bold title you will read consider this when she's reading it in her consciousness that's the inner speech and she's all she's doing all of this in her imagination so read that cover um, of the magazine with your name your photo and you're seeing that title that says um Top success in the industry, something like that. I've forgotten the exact words we used. So she did that, and then she did it for only 20 seconds. That's why I timed that to do. I actually timed it, and I said, I'm going to give you 20 seconds to imagine it. So I asked her to imagine it in 20 seconds, and I knew I gave her a lot of time, a lot, because I still did a similar exercise with a student on the call today, and I gave her only 10 seconds, and she imagined the scene that we constructed together three times in 10 seconds. At the end of which, she actually felt relief, which was something she didn't feel from all of the anxious scenes she's been had, having before. So this friend of mine did it in those 20 seconds, and then at the end of 20 seconds, she said she actually felt, finally, she made it. And I didn't suggest to her an inner speech. I only told her, see this and read this on the magazine and period. And then she said, finally. She's made it. it. was how she felt in her consciousness. So the feeling comes with the right scene. What you to do, go to Awakened Imagination, all right, by Neville Goddard, and look at it. He mentioned these words there about three times. He mentioned it in chapter 7. He mentioned it in chapter 5. I can't tell what other chapter he mentioned it at. But he said our task is to get the right speech. That's in chapter 5. In chapter 7, he said our task is to get the right sequence of events by which is meaning the thing we are to do is to actually know what exactly we're going to imagine that implies the wish is fulfilled not that implies the wish is going to be fulfilled but that implies the wish is fulfilled so you're going to take that scene such as congratulations on your job or we're so happy to announce that you got a role with us which is different from your interview with us is the greatest we've had in the industry and we're going to be uh, looking forward to your contacting you. No, but we're so happy that you've got a role with us. Or we're so happy to announce to you. Or we're pleased to announce to you that you've got a role with us. Now, I assure you, if you keep it to just those words, we are pleased to announce to you that you have a role with us. This is about 14 words. 
You can imagine this two times in 10 seconds. And then you imagine that you receive a mail, all right? And all that you see in that email is we are happy to announce to you that you've got a role with us or that you've got a position with us. And then you imagine that again and again in 10 seconds. Do you know what you'd feel? You'd actually feel proud, accomplished, like a job owner. But I'm saying 10. I'm not saying 10 minutes. I'm saying 10 seconds of imagining that. So the feeling that you have from using your imagination is that of relief. It has to tend towards relief. Of all the human emotions on earth, relief is the most keenly felt. That's what Neville said. All right. So the more relief you feel about, about the imaginal scene or through the imaginal scene, the more effective that imaginal scene. Then keep it simple. We've, I've discussed these principles a lot of time. Keep it simple. Keep it implying the wishes fulfilled. Um, keep it straightforward. All right. Keep it at the wish fulfilled. Not something that might make the wish fulfilled happen. No. You're not, you're not being dubious here, right? You're not like trying to be double-minded. Or maybe if I do it this way, then by chance it might happen that way. No. It's straight business. Like you're really business-minded. Just focused on the goal and hitting up the goal itself and nothing else. All right? So you read a success story and then you're excited. Woo! It's happened. Then I hope it's going to happen for me too when I use it. Yeah. That is the state of desire. And that's actually the starting point. I won't tell you to not desire. If any person tells you, Oh, leave the desire. Don't desire. Quit that coach. Quit that system. Because the first thing, in using the law of assumption um, intentionally, consciously, is desire. You start with that. So a success story pushes you, encourages you, to really want to test it and that's good but when you're testing it you're not going to be having the same excitement or feeling as you had when you were reading this success story and another lesson that you can actually take on from this as we're bringing this or wrapping this up is that when you are imagining the wish fulfilled you will not be thinking how great Neville's lectures are <laughs> okay <laughs> okay very important if you find yourself thinking yes i'm doing what neville is saying to do when you actually imagine the wish fulfilled then you're not imagining it you've been excited you're thinking of it you're having the desire but you're not imagining it okay if you actually doing it nothing else is going to be in your consciousness but that particular idea because an idea is truly felt by you when it can crowd out all other idea, that's intensity. Intensity is not 25 minutes of meditation. Intensity is not one hour of hypnosis. Intensity is not five days of prayers and fasting. Intensity is that that particular idea, in however few a moment, however little a moment, it occupies your consciousness, crowds out all other ideas includes our great Neville's lectures are our practical I teach this to you our simple the instructions I've given you are it's it crowds out all of those the only thing you can occupy in your consciousness is the doing of it and that evokes the feeling of having done it all right so you know to have the feeling of excitement and jubilation like you have rather excitement like you have when you're reading someone's success story you have to have the feeling that actually belongs to that scene itself when you imagine that scene. Alright? So, I believe that we really get some clarity with this. And that now, you know. By the way, I'm not saying you know the kind of feeling you're going to be looking out for when you're doing the imaginal act. But you know when you're reflecting. Hi, how listen. You know when you're reflecting after the imaginal act that you've done it appropriately when you realize that throughout the imaginal process the only thing that occupied your mind was that idea and you really felt while it was occupying your mind you really felt the relief or you felt accomplishment you felt proud to have it or you felt um jubilation okay and as often as possible as much as possible if you wanted to use if you want to use excitement in your 
imaginal act in the feeling, throw that excitement to someone else. I like to say it that way. Throw it out to someone else. Let someone else catch it. How? Just imagine someone saying, congratulations on your new job, on your new role. What do you think they're going to be doing? They're going to be excited. But how do you think you're going to receive that congratulations? You'd be receiving it with what? With pride. Because excitement can be very deceptive. Um, but when you have a deceitful, but when you have pride, accomplishment, relief, joy, love, all of that is real and substantial. Okay? So we get a lot of clarity with this, and I believe that you would actually put this to practice and use. And again, I'll repeat when you're practicing it, don't be mindful of what I have said to practice because you're busy doing it. So you can't be thinking of maybe you're doing the right thing when you're actually busy doing it. Okay? So, that's our lesson today. And, um, oh, of course, really, get your pre-order of this book, The Power of Inner Conversation. This is the time for you to get it because this book is amazing. It's going to change everything you've known, understood, thought about your imagination, the limit of it, which it doesn't really have any limit, but do you really know that? <laughs> do you really, really know that? Do you really appreciate that? This, the power of revision, is going to show you on many levels what you're actually capable of, and I'll just encourage you to pre-order it right now while you still have up to 40% of it. Okay? So, um, five days to go, isn't it? Five days to the launch of this book. Until um, later, have a wonderful time, everyone. Bye-bye.